Hello. Thank you for watching this little video where I'm going to explain to you how to use my keyword opportunity analysis sheet in order to speed up your keyword research significantly based on the keyword rankings of your competitors or other websites which have a lot of visibility on SEO in your space, in your industry. Uh, I'm going to use an example here, which is the company Magpie, which is a nonprofit organization. And based on that, I'm going to show you how to use the template. The first thing you have to do is make a copy of the template in my article. By the way, if you got here on YouTube directly, please find a link to the article where I explain how the whole thing works as well, which is um, there's a link here or also in the YouTube description. So what we're going to do now is we first have to put in the, the domains that we want to look at. So first of all, the first domain we want to put in is our domain. In this case, Magpie Education. Below, you will see other domains of competitors which we want to look at or other websites which have uh, significant SEO visibility. I've already populated this information here. So in the template, you can see there's their placeholders for that. Uh, what is name, you may ask? So name is basically a way for us to filter out brand and non-brand searches further down the line. So what we have to do here is just basically write down the name of that website or company or like what would people use if they wanted to get straight to that to that website. We don't want to have these sort of keywords in there because it's going to be very hard for, for you to rank for them if they're for a different brand. But we can also choose to actually only show these brand keywords as well. But first of all, make sure the, the important thing is to actually map this correctly here. So in this case, for Magpie, there's the name, there's an alternative spelling here, it could be Magpie as two words, and you can see some other examples here. For example, Sam Labs could also be Sam Labs. So this is uh, for us a way to filter out brand and non-brand keywords. Okay, but so what's the first thing you have to do? The first thing we have to do actually is to put some data in this sheet. And what we're going to use for that is SEMrush. So you do require an SEMrush Pro subscription in order to use this. And you can find a link to a free trial in the description of the video or in my article as well. Yeah, the first thing is you're going to have to look at the SEO visibility for the different domains and export some data. So we're going to go to the SEMrush website. And I've already got a link open here for Magpie. What you can see here, it's the organic research uh, era of the, of the SEMrush uh, tools uh, website. Um, you can get there by typing in the domain, then you go to organic research and you go to keyword uh, rankings. And what we have to do here is essentially export all of the their current rankings. You can see in their case, it's not really that many that they're working on growing that, but it's just an example. So here we say we want to export this and we want to export, in this case, everything, but generally only a maximum of 3,000 rows, 3,000 keywords. If you export more than that, the spreadsheet is going to get extremely slow and it won't be usable anymore. So please uh, use the 3,000 maximum. There will be a selector here that says first 3,000. That's what we want. So here in this case, we're going to get all. We're going to click on CSV and we're going to download this CSV, which we have here now. So next step, we go back to our sheet and we can see here there's a corresponding tab name called SR1, which is SEMrush1 for Magpie. So that means we're going to go to this SR1 tab and we're going to import the data that we just downloaded, clicking on upload. I think we can just drag it over here and then it's going to be uploading and we want to replace this current sheet with this data. And We'll do the same thing for the other domain as well. So I'm going to be uh, cheating a little bit because I have already done this. So you can see on the other tabs, I have all the information uh, downloaded in the same way for the, uh, the other website. And this spreadsheet now will take a little bit of time to essentially calculate all the data and all the settings that uh, have have already made in order to create a list of unique keywords um, based on what your competitor sites and your site is ranking for. 
Um, by the way, one thing I didn't say is for the copy that you create for yourself. So you create a copy for yourself. I go in here and make a copy. Um, give it a give it a name. So for example, in this case, it's for Magpie. Then we'll have to be a little bit patient in order to get our list of keywords. Okay, this is done now. Our spreadsheet has calculated uh, everything that we need uh, at this stage. So now the first thing we can do is actually we can hide all of these tabs because we really don't need them anymore unless you want to update your data. So we're just going to hide them just to keep the spreadsheet cleaner. And um, the output of this first step is going to be visible on this tab called one keyword selection. So what we can see here uh, it's hopefully already quite interesting. It's basically a list of all of the unique keywords that we are ranking for for certain criteria which we have to find, but we haven't changed them yet. So it's just the standard ones. So you can see the keywords itself. You can see the search volume, monthly search volume for the market that you have to find. Uh, I can actually say that. Um, so it's pretty important that you stick to a one market. So on SEM rush, make sure you only use one market rather than mixing different markets, which will skew the search volumes. You will also see the keyword difficulty. So the keyword difficulty index is an SEM rush metric that shows you how hard it is to rank for certain keywords. You can see you have a fair amount of keywords here in the lower like 50, 60, 70s, which is pretty promising, but also the search volumes generally are not very high. We can also see the CPC um, competition metrics. These are metrics that are paid search metrics which can be sometimes useful for filtering out very competitive keywords, but often also SEMrush does not have any data on these, as you can see. Uh, often the CPC is zero and competition is also zero, so I would not necessarily recommend to use these metrics to filter the keywords, which I'll show you in a minute. We also see the number of results. Again, could be an indicator for competitiveness. Again, you can see some data, though, is uh, lacking, lacking information, so I don't think this has zero results. Then we can also see the best rank of any domain. So this is actually another filter we can use, um, which I'll show you in a minute, but it's a way for us to say we only want to see keywords where at least one of our domains is ranking at least at position what we define, so let's say 20. This is a way to, for us to just filter out irrelevant keywords, which maybe some domain is ranking on position 50, but it doesn't mean it's actually relevant for our industry, right? Next, um, this keyword theme and relevancy. I'm going to skip this for now, and I will get to that later. But also you see a few more stats. So you can see what is actually your domain's best rank. So in this case, Magpie's best rank for this keyword. You can see the estimated click-through rate based on the rankings. So for example, uh, Magpie is ranking on position 9 for this keyword, OCR, MOOC. And we can see which page they're ranking with and what the estimated click-through rate is based on the settings that we can actually also change. And I'll again show you that in a minute. And we can see how much traffic we think this website, in, or in our case, our website is getting per month. Then, yeah, we have some more data for all of the other competitors, same principles, which can be very useful to do competitor analysis as well and make some very interesting graphs. But what I want to focus on now is the settings, because this is what we can use to actually narrow down the selection of keywords that we um, have seen now to something that's more manageable. In this case, it's actually not too bad. We have in total um, only 81 keywords in here. So that's pretty low. Normally, you would, have to have, you would probably have more keywords. Um, but again, this is just an example. So what we can do now, and I want to give some attention to these two areas here. So the first one is negative keywords, and the next one is advanced filters. I'm going to skip keyword groups for now. Negative keywords, some of you might be familiar with this concept from paid search. So this is basically a way to filter out words which or keywords which are completely irrelevant based on words that these keywords contain. So for example, say we have um, a keyword which we don't think is going to be relevant. We have Facebook user manual. So that's not really interesting or relevant for the ad tech space that this company is in. So we can say, okay, let's actually remove every any keyword that includes the word Facebook by adding it as a negative keyword here. And we can use up to 50 keywords here. Um, one important thing is that 
to not delete the hashtag for any of these unused keywords. Otherwise, it's going to break the spreadsheet. OK, and then we have this section here. So this is actually one of the most important areas to filter down to more a more relevant list of keywords. So the first filter we can set is what is actually the minimum monthly search volume for a keyword if you want to consider this, this keyword here. It's set pretty low. You may want to go higher than 30. So you might want to go to 100 or even higher than that, depending on how competitive your space is and, and how many yeah, how many people are searching for you, for the keywords in your space. We can also use filters for the minimum CPC and the minimum and the maximum CPC. Again, as I mentioned already, uh, these are not the most reliable metrics for, for SEO. So I would not necessarily recommend you to use them. And many keywords have a CPC of zero because it's just lack of data. So be aware of that. The keyword difficulty is a very good metric for SEO. So if you want to, if we want to say, let's only look at keywords, which are actually quite easy, we could say, okay, let's use a maximum of 70 here to, uh, to narrow down our selection further. And then uh, we can do the same with the competi competition metric. Again, this is a paid search metric as well, which again, I would probably not touch for now. Um, I've already mentioned to you that we can filter for brand and non-brand. So this is, this is what this filter is about. So here we can actually say, okay, do we want to see brand searches here or not? Usually, I would recommend you to filter out brand searches, but if you want, you could just say uh, both, which in this case means you will see everything. Questions only is uh, a filter that I created here, which allows you to look at yeah, questions that people ask. So if you're interested in that, then you can, by changing this to yes, you will only see keywords which include any of the words when, what, how, or where. That's a good way to, to also uh, slice your keywords. Last but not least, two more filters here. So one is the minimum number of words. This is basically just looking at how many words a, a keyword consists of. Um, I have set this as two because usually if a, if a keyword is just one word, it's very generic. And I, will, I don't want to see these very generic terms. But you may want to change this. Uh, you can also set it to something higher if you're looking for more like long tail searches uh, with comp comprising of many words. The last one is the best rank of any competitor that, that I've already mentioned to you. So if we want to just limit ourselves to words which at least one of the domains uh, is already ranking for relatively highly, then this is a way to, to, to do that. OK, so we can already see this has refreshed uh, because of the Facebook filter. And we have two less keywords in here. So you can see this always gives you the count of all the keywords that we have in the selection. And this is the click-through graph, which I touched on. So this is basically used to calculate the expected traffic based on a ranking of any of the domains. You can change this if you think this doesn't represent the reality for you. Um, but this is a standard kind of distribution, which is based on the study by the Internet Marketing Ninjas. But yeah, feel free to change it if you think it doesn't represent the right data for you. Great. So while this is refreshing, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about keyword groups and how to use them in this spreadsheet. So keyword grouping is something that is super important because it will allow us to group certain keywords together into like logical groups. And then we can decide to write content for, for these groups. Um, and the way to do this in the spreadsheet is unfortunately still quite manual. But I haven't found a better way to do this at this stage. Uh, so if you have any ideas on how to do this, maybe in an automated fashion or in a better way, please uh, leave a comment or send me a message. And I'd be happy to incorporate that in the next version of this. This section in our Add Settings tab allows us to define the different keyword groups we can use in order to segment our keywords. So you can see we already have some in here which are broad, irrelevant, and not defined, which essentially are just uh, generic ones which we can use to take out keywords which are not really in use or which are not really relevant. But we can also add um, some new ones. So for example, MOOC might be one in their example here, or um, one might be around um, education uh, topics as an example. So basically, the step here is to come up with different groups that you already know 
in order to segment your keywords. The next step is to go to your keyword selection and then actually copy the keywords, which should be your final selection that you have in here. And just copy it column A and B, just uh, copy. And then we go to our keyword grouping tab and there's already some explanation here as well if you forget how to do this. But basically we just uh, paste this information and we say paste as values, which gives us these keywords in here. We can also delete this first header column and we can even delete number two or you can leave it in there if you, if you want to. So now the next step is to actually assign all of these keywords. In this case it's manageable, it's, not, it's less than 100 to a certain group. So here, um, let's look at this one, which uh, is OCR MOOC, which we will define to our category MOOC. So basically, the keywords, keyword groups that we define on the settings tab are gonna be here in the selection. So let's, let's say we come up, we find one, which is EdTech UK as an example, where we really don't have a keyword group defined yet. What we do is we go back to our settings and then we create a new keyword group, for example, called general at tech as a keyword group potentially. And then we go back in here and say, okay, let's use this one as general at tech. So you just need to do this for all of the keywords here. You can accelerate it a little bit by, for example, setting a filter um, and then saying, okay, I want to use certain keywords which contain for example, MOOC, and then say, okay, all of these, okay, in this case it's only one, but if there were more than one, we could say to all of them, uh, assign them to this keyword group MOOC. So that could can accelerate uh, the keyword group assignment. Basically, this information will be pulled in into your keyword themes, uh, into this keyword selection tab, and it will allow us at a later stage to actually slice and dice our keywords by themes and understand how much opportunity is there, how much search volume is there in each of these groups, how difficult are these keywords on average, how are our competitors ranking and so on. And we can use this to really find out, okay, what are topics that we should probably focus on for creating content, for example, uh, or improving our existing content and uh, what are other opportunities which don't really have much search volume and hence are probably not worth focusing on. The other metric we can use in order to find out is a certain keyword theme or keyword worth focusing on is relevancy. So this is sort of optional, but often not all keywords will be highly relevant for your business. So you can use this in the same tab, keyword grouping, to say, okay, well, relevance can be, uh, for this one, maybe it's only three, but for this one, you might say, okay, it's actually five. And this is another way for us to say, okay, let's actually focus on keywords which have a high relevancy only, and we can do further analysis uh, based on this data, either in Google Sheets or in Excel or whatever other tool of your choice uh, pretty easily. If, you're, if you need some more help with doing this further analysis, please leave a comment. I have a few other templates which I'm using for that, but I want to keep it simple for now and I want to keep this accessible. And yeah, thank you very much for listening to me and watching this little video. Please let me know if anything was unclear. Give me feedback if you find this template useful. I would love to hear from you because it really motivates me to create more content for you. Thank you very much. Bye.